honestly believe that there's no other industry in the country that's as impactful as the industry that we call Bollywood or Indian films. Now imagine dedicating your entire life to one industry, studying it inside out every single week, every single day actually. That's Rajiv Masand for you. Also, super articulate guy. He can talk about his thoughts really, really well. But of course, it's the Ranveer show. And if we're talking about Bollywood, we're not just talking about the business of Bollywood. We're also talking about the gossipy side of Bollywood, the dark side of Bollywood. But I promise you, it's all from an intellectual perspective. Yes, gossip, darkness, and intellectual conversation can be put in the same 30 minutes or so. Hope you enjoy this 30-minute podcast with one of the most learned men when it comes to the world of modern Bollywood, Rajiv Masand, lots to learn in this podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Ranvi Show. This one's going to be smart, intellectual, articulate, because we got all these words personified. Mr. Rajiv Masand. Thank you. You're making very big promises. I <laughs> hope we can live up to all that. No, it's, you're, you're one of the most fiery brains in the business and that's wow. why I'm going to ask you. Thank you. Three quick pieces of Bollywood gossip. <laughs> God, really? Without, without, without taking names. Oh dear. Okay. I know that a particular actor is really angry with his co-star because his co-star has suddenly, uh, has, has, has recently spoken about uh, kind of disowned the film by by pointing to historical inaccuracies in the film, um, and and the coast and the and the the producer actor is really mad at him. Okay. Um, I know that a certain uh, um, actress who uh, was trying to avoid her ex at a certain event uh, was only half successful because they were in the room at the same time and it got awkward because the other actor was with his family. Okay. And one more. <laughs> this is hard, man. Uh, I know that there's serious problem, there's serious monetary problem on a film that everyone's really looking forward to. It's supposed to be the big one that's going to come out, but there's a there's a huge financial problem there. They might be running out of budget because they've been shooting for so long. Oh, wow. Okay. Cool. Uh, my next question to you, Mr. Rajiv Masand. Uh, because you're from this industry, it's your job to study this industry a lot. Right. So it's going to be a straight up difficult question to you. Okay. What's Shah Rukh Khan done wrong in the last five, six years? You know, um, I think he became... Um, I think, uh, first I want to say that I think that he has taken I, risks. I think I think Zero was a huge risk. I think there was... there was it, it came from a place of trying something really brave. I think a film like Fan was extraordinary um, in terms of what he wanted to do. I think what he's been unable to, 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 to shake off is to play Shah Rukh Khan over and over again. Uh, even when he's playing a dwarf, he's playing Shah Rukh the dwarf. He's not playing that dwarf. He's playing Shah Rukh the, the little person. He's playing Shah Rukh the, um, the socially awkward, whatever, in fan. Um, which is why in fan, for me, the character that stood out was actually the film star because I thought that that he played really interestingly and he was playing a version of himself but but that one really bristled because because he was playing him darker he was playing him as as someone who's who dances at weddings for money who's who's uh, who's not all uh, you know who's not the who's not the movie star that we that we see in on on hoardings but but he's the real movie star so I think the problem is that he needs to completely let go of of Shah Rukh Khan and um and he's a fine actor yeah. it's there uh, I think he needs to work with directors who are not overwhelmed by him mm. I think he needs to let go of control and I think that that's very hard when you're a massive superstar because you really do understand the business and you understand your fans and you think you understand what the world wants better than even your filmmakers right. but I think that the only way to completely submit is to give up control trust a filmmaker trust a story and say that I like this and that's why I want to do it and I think he's done that but very often what he's done is he loves he loves Anand Rai's story but he will come in as, as producer and take charge of a lot of things. Don't. Let, uh, let it be Anand Rai's aesthetic. Let it be Shujit Sarkar's aesthetic. Let it be Imtiaz Ali's aesthetic. I think that he allows too much of Shah Rukh to creep in. Got it. Um, but I still think that he's the bravest of them all. I think he's taking more leaps and, 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 and you know, he's taking more chances than, than most of the others are. He's also the most charming of them all. So that's why even if he has only flop films from yeah. her on, he's still gonna be loved and respected by you know, like... that's the thing. I think he's just really charming. It's important. I'll, I'll tell you from my... I'm, I'm not name dropping, but there's two people in the world and I'm saying world because it's two different... You know, there are, who are exactly the same personality-wise and I've met them. One is Shah Rukh and the other is Tom Cruise. Yeah, I I've met Tom Cruise that. and I'm... I, cannot tell you how similar they are. When you're with them, they charm the 
pants off you <laughs> I, i've been in a room with tom cruise for like 8 minutes i mean you yeah. know you've been on junkets so yes. you know how these things are really short in those 8 minutes i felt like i'm the most important person in his life yeah. and that is that is exactly the quality that sharuk has when they're with you and sharuk makes you wait man like i mean you know by the time you're it's your turn to to go into a meeting or an interview with sharuk four hours have passed or whatever so you're exhausted but that half hour one hour that you spend with sharuk you walk out feeling like you're the most important person in his life in the world because they really know how to uh, make you feel good they really they, they really know um, you know they they know how to talk to people right. and tom cruise is exactly like that and i think that that's why they have the enduring the both of them i mean to, there, there have been spates of uh, you know there have been huge chunks in tom cruise's career where films didn't work where he didn't have uh, major releases but he's still considered one of the biggest superstars in the world because of that enduring uh, quality he has that um, even when the films don't work you don't forget him i mean mm. he's he's had such a huge impact on the cultural footprint really as right. as has sharuk right uh, i also want to ask you a little bit about the business of bollywood mm. uh, now these top actors everyone's becoming a producer what i think a lot of the audiences don't know is that actors have a lot of businesses outside of films as well yeah so uh, could you like kind of just very fast break down the whole uh revenue stream model of all these actors like what's happening in the modern day yes all of them have uh, have other interests because i constantly you know you're constantly hearing about how films actually don't pay as much money and it probably is true because given the amount of time they spent working on a film um it's not even if even if you actually unless you're akshay kumar <laughs> who makes five films in a year and who charges like 30 plus crores and everything unless but but most of the other stars don't want to do that amir khan does one film in 3 years and one film in 2 years and whatever he gets paid is not um is not commensurate to what you could be making mm. if you were doing other things so i think that they make all their money the real money comes from other things you do you know i remember meeting sorry again dropping names ryan reynolds you know i i remember meeting ryan reynolds when 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 he was doing deadpool and he said you make movies for love uh, you get paid for the marketing because half the time they're they're promoting films Said, right that's the part that you don't really enjoy right yeah. plugging a film and i think that's true in in the case of bollywood stars it's the ads it's the appearances um it's the other businesses i mean each of them have uh, uh, you know multiple businesses are you familiar with who has what uh, you know i have to say no i don't I, i'm not i mean sharuk of course has a production company but i'm i'm sure that's one of other businesses i'm sure they're all heavily invested in um in in uh real estate i'm sure that they mm. have you know I, I, the joke about akshay kumar used to be that while well, you walk into toronto and akshay kumar owns half of toronto because he's bought <laughs> so much property but but i'm not i have to say very honestly i could uh, i mean you know you know of some like you know abhishek has a stake in a you know in a sports company and right. you know that uh, tapsi has a stake tapsi also has a wedding planning business so she she's um, i think they all recognize that you need to be entrepreneurs outside of the film business because it's so fickle hmm. and because that landscape changes so quickly hmm. and because if you want to do qual- it's it's funny how quality work is inversely proportionate to to actually income so if you really want to spend your time making movies with love and you want to spend your time pre- preparing for movies and you want to do like one film in 2 years then good luck the money is not because you know look at it it's there there uh Yes, thirty-five crores seems like a lot of money, but look at the lifestyles. Look at the um, you know they all want to have the fancy cars. That's not going to come out of uh, making one movie every two years. Yeah, you have to have um, the additional the additional revenue streams. I'm not sure what those are in a lot of their cases. Uh, I mean, I, I I I've heard Amir is investing in a lot of um, in a lot of startups actually. Uh, I know Rana Dagupati is is hugely involved in 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 startups, but. Um, but i don't have the details i i mean fortunately for me that that's an that's an area i don't yeah. necessarily cover are there a lot of unaddressed mental health issues in bollywood flying around i think there are and they 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 have to be right because it's just such a uh, fragile fickle business that i can't imagine that people don't have insecurities and i can't claim to understand it very well but you know it's it's funny and i'm 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 saying this literally for the first time i mean i i read shaheen bhat's book right um that she wrote on 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 that's alia bhat's sister that's alia's sister um and and she's someone who's who's spoken about her battle with depression and i read it because i was going to interview her and and i was reading it and i could i could relate to a lot of the symptoms and i'm like gosh i don't think of myself as someone who is depressed or who has mental issues uh, mental health issues um but if someone like me who who seem who has a seemingly ordinary life um not the stakes that movie stars do can relate to symptoms um can you imagine what what some of these big big stars are dealing with um i mean every friday or 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 a couple of fridays every year when they have movies coming out your fate hangs in the balance because it's really true that that a friday decides so much it really decides what, where you're going to be for the next year and now since these guys make only one or two films a year you're you're kind of it, it, there's just so much insecurity there is um there are new actors coming along and now it's not just new actors right now there's new um 
there's new areas i mean look at look at how look at how popular youtubers have become look at how popular uh, the actors who are working on digital shows have become i mean it has to have some uh, impact how do you realize when i mean when you when when a bunch of your films are flopping you have to wonder whether people want to see you anymore mm. um whether you know whether people whether you are you're you're relevant at all anymore right. i mean those those things must play uh, you know some role in in your i mean you know they, they it must have some impact um and i i'm constantly wondering when i question myself so much it they must be it must be so much more you know and and that's why you hear of these stories of substance abuse and yeah. because people deal with it in different ways right i right. mean uh, uh, it takes a lot and i know that it takes a lot to even admit that you have a problem and those are basic stuff yeah like right. you know when you see a when you see a someone who's a rival or a contemporary do really well does it does it give do, do you not depressed but do you do you feel low um do you have moments which are really happy moments and you still feel low i mean i didn't even know that, i didn't even know that those are symptoms right but they are and they could be and, and all of those things i'm sure uh, that um, that they feel but i also think that today the conversation is getting louder with mm. what with what deepika is doing uh, with um, you know with anushka speaking about it with a, a lot of these guys are speaking about it and i think that um, sometimes i see that the way that they get attacked for it because people don't also culturally and and you know as a society if we don't understand something we tend to reject it we tend right. to make fun of it um, which is sad because if you do that more people are going to be be uh, awkward about about talking about it and the only way you can deal deal with it is addressing it also going to a shrink going to a psychiatrist it's so um you know in the west it's it's such a matter of fact kind of thing i mean everyone does it and, and with actors and stuff it's like a, it's almost a cliche mm. uh, everyone has their own shrink on speed dial literally wow. um over here no one even talks about it i i don't know i don't know if there are many that go um that 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 have um you know that that visit psychiatrists and psychologists um but i would imagine that there is a need just given how transitory transient uh, how fickle this business is um, how it puts you on a pedestal at one moment and you're pulled off pretty soon um, how things change so fast i would imagine that some professional help is not a bad is not a bad idea and i and i and i'm 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 pretty sure some of them do seek that out what is one thing that your audience specifically doesn't know about the world of films i think that um a lot of people feel that if you're a movie star it's it's a great easy life um I don't think it's I don't think so. I think the bigger that you are, um there's a lot of pressure on you. I understand as I say this that we you know we're talking about movie stars who get really well paid, who get really uh, all the fanciest clothes and the fanciest you know gizmos and everything for free. Um and it's almost a case of a poor little rich guy. Mm. But it is. It's really hard. I'm not saying uh, um oh you know so sad that there's so, uh, Of course there's a lot that compensates. I don't think anything can compensate for for the hard life, uh, but I do think that it's a hard life. I think that's th- that they work really hard because the the pressure and I think it's much more the today the pressure is much more today than it was a few years ago. I think there's a lot of pressure uh, to stay in the game, to constantly make the right choices. I mean Aishman Khurana today is probably the number one star in terms of the choices. And I can't think of someone who has more pressure on them because he's now has the pressure to constantly make the right choices right. it must be terrifying yeah. you know i remember alia bhat talking about how when she had her first flop um shandar which came after a bunch of hits uh she was devastated because it was her first flop and her father was, was like this is a good thing because now you've tasted it now, now you won't be on your toes i mean ayushman must be i can't imagine what ayushman must be like because you know You, you you don't want to, when you've got this lucky streak and everyone's talking about it you know the, there's there's natural pressure and there's the pressure that people put on you and we're constantly this is the man with the golden touch this is the man with the golden gut this is the man who touches anything and it turns into gold and there will be one flop and suddenly everyone is are yaar he's not he's not that special yaar and that's a lot of pressure and we suddenly forget that you know he has made incredible choices and that could well be a great choice a film doesn't flop only because it's bad right. films flop i mean so many good films don't work so it could it could flop for whatever reason but the kind of pressure that someone which is the sharuk scenario you know um i mean it it must be so hard being sharuk because right. you're the guy that everyone loves and you're wondering but then why are they going why aren't they going and watching my movies i mean he just has to go out to his balcony to see how much they love him but why aren't they going to see my movies it must you know I I can't imagine what that must be like. Right. And and a similarly um this whole conversation on nepotism, you know, I I I and I've just come off the the round table that we did and I saw Ananya get get mercilessly trolled. And I just want to say I I think a lot of people um the 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 because you asked me what do a lot of people not know. Um I think it is hard. I think that even the guys who come from 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 big names uh you know famous names do have their own struggle. Um 
and and maybe she didn't articulate it as well because she spoke about uh, her father not being on coffee with Karan. But I, I want to say, you know, everyone has their own reality. It it's not an equal world. Your struggle and my struggle may not be the same. Yours may be much more. What to you seems trivial. My struggle might seem trivial. My 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 insecurities might seem trivial, but they're not to me, right? right. It is. I mean, and your struggle might seem trivial to the third guy who's exactly. who's who who lost his entire family in a car crash. Right. Are you comparing it with them? Is your struggle less because he's gone through that? No. So I think the people are we are very very uh, quick to judge, uh, and I and I'm guilty of it. I think we're all guilty of it in, uh, in our in our, in our level as well but i just feel like uh, some of these kids who have famous movie star parents and stuff i mean uh, you know cut them some slack yeah uh, just want to stand up a little bit for ananya pandey yeah. so she was my junior in school okay. uh, and the school was dhirubhai mani international school and the school has really given me more than i could have asked for it's made wow. me the person i am today okay. in life in saying that it was some of bombay's uh, most elite families that sent their kids to that school including sharukh's family Sefali Khan's family. Right. So I grew up with Sara yeah. Ali Khan. I grew up with Sachin Tendulkar's kids. Right. Um, and I've been in that school. I've been in her shoes, and I know what it's like growing up in that environment mm. where, say, you're growing up with a superstar's kid. Correct. Uh, and you know their parents are called on coffee with Karan. Your parents are not. Right. That is your reality. That it is your is. struggle. It really is. It. it yeah. And that's yeah. not something that audiences understand. Like people are Correct. very quick to judge. They yeah. think that oh, you know, you're a film star's person. Correct. Like they, people make these stories about you in their head, which yeah. is very yeah. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Poor girl must be going through like a whole. You know, world Correct. of terms. And you know, she's actually quite articulate and she's quite smart. And in that episode, I I felt it was unfair because they they pulled out one little bit, which yeah. sounded okay, which sounded. If you take it out of context, it sounds like a you know a, a famous person complaining. But if you actually listen to her throughout and her take on on privilege, I think she actually acknowledged it. And I think she was you know she constantly spoke about the the work she feels she's she she needs to do as a result. And I think that we're we're very quick to judge. Yeah, I'm also a fan of Sadan Chaturvedi in saying that yeah. I loved him in Inside Edge actually right. even more than Gully Boy uh -huh. because he really convinced me he's playing that bowler right. from a village. Uh, what was the vibe between them after the interview? <laughs> <laughs> you know, can I tell you uh, at that interview, um, we didn't even realize. I don't think anyone and I and I, I I certainly didn't realize that that was a snap trap kind of. You know what the way it was pulled out and 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 memes were made and and that and just that little bit. Um, I think he said what he had to say. She said what she had to say. He said I don't think he was responding in a in a manner in a manner to snap at her. It makes for great TV and it makes for, it it makes for great memes if you if you just isolate that. I think what he says is you're right. What he said is absolutely true and that's his reality. Right. But that doesn't mean that her reality is any lesser for her. That's the life she's led. It's not an equal world. It's not a fair world. Everyone is not. Uh, you know, you could you can have these conversations only if every if it's a fair world and everyone has the exact starting point and and someone is complaining that oh but then sorry right. you only only merit will take you that far. But we. We don't live in a perfect world. We don't live in a fair world. So the vibe was absolutely fine. They're actually doing a movie together. Mr. Masand, your round tables are straight up fire. I really enjoy doing them. Thank you. But what do people not know about them? Uh, I'll tell you. I'm, I'm glad you asked me this question because <laughs> I've never, again, I've never said this because I don't feel it's right for me to say it on my platforms. When you, when when people say, oh, this person wasn't there, uh, you know, Rajiv, Rithik was not on the round table. How could you not take Rithik? You hate Rithik. You always hate Rithik. I'm not I I think it's disrespectful on my part to come out and respond to those questions and say hey we tried to get Rithik Roshan but his dates we couldn't match if I say that it's undermining those who are on the table but I want to tell you I promise you we reach out to everyone who's been good in a film that year there is no limit on how many people we can have on the round table so if you see five and you think Rithik Roshan's not on that round table because Rajiv didn't want him That's bullshit. <laughs> we reached out to. I promise you, we reached out to every single name that comes. I mean, if you have a bizarre choice, I mean, if you're if you're talking about someone who doesn't deserve to be there, only you think he, that person gave a great performance, then that's different. But um, everyone who attacks me saying that you're biased and that's why you didn't put this one on and that's why you didn't, no, it's it's a monster to coordinate to get. Yeah. Do you know what it takes to get five people on that? I mean, I, I what promise, does it take? Oh God, it takes it takes months of incessant calling. It takes. Uh, 
you know, no one says no to to being on the round table. I think most people are, are happy to be on it because I think they see it as a as as a place where we have sincere conversations about the craft, about the business. Um, what is hard is coordinating everyone's dates together. There are egos involved. There are uh, genuinely scheduling issues involved. I mean, Vicky Kaushal was supposed to be on the round table uh, this year because, of course, he was incredible in Uri, but but he was in in um, Russia shooting and he could only come back on the twenty eighth of December, by, by which time the round tables are done. I couldn't wait. I, it, it's sometimes it's as simple as that. As long my my point is, as long as the other five who are on the table deserve to be there, don't question my integrity. Um, did you feel like any of those people in that table didn't deserve to be there? Mm. No, you you think so and so also deserve to be there. Then I promise you that person was not there because because we tried and we couldn't get that person there. But every I just want to say that it's very easy to oh this person you know if you don't see your favorite actor oh Karina wasn't there but. But Karina's movie came out after. We don't put an yeah. actor, we don't invite an actor to a table unless we've seen that film. So Do you I mean, do you have like Bollywood parents calling you and telling you, hey, star kid ko le le na. <laughs> uh, not uh, <laughs> not Bollywood parents. There are PR people. Oh. And 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 it's hard sometimes. And uh, you know, sometimes it's hard. It's not just PR people, it's producers, sometimes it's actors who send you messages saying they want to be on it. And it's it's very, very awkward because um How because, do you say no? Uh, it's 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 hard, you know. Um you just say like i think you'll be i think you're going to be better in in, in next year's wow. film and you know you have to be polite because um because everyone thinks they're great and they probably are good but you really only have place for five and you want to get your first choice uh, and you want to get everyone who deserves to be there actually really there is no i mean it's not only place for five we think of five as a benchmark i can't go below five uh, but we've had i mean we had we had seven actresses last year i think we had seven directors this year um five is what we like to hit um and and more than that is if if there is i'll never i'll, I'll never not put an actor because we only have place for five so are people you know the real versions of themselves on camera or is it a show and then once the camera is off they become a you new know, person i don't know i have to say i think it would be uh, you know an hour and a half or whatever long we take to shoot it would be a lot of it would be you, you'd have to be a damn good actor to be pretending <laughs> for that long i think it it slips you know your who you yeah. are kind of slips it sometimes um but i think that they recognize that on this on this round table if you're pretending you're not you're gonna you, it, people can see through it mm. uh, because they're seeing you now in relation to others uh, and i think that people that love you love you for who you are so if you're not being yourself people can see that i mean i'm not going to name this actor but this is an actor that everyone loves but he was clearly uh, two years ago i think it was and he or, or, or yeah two years ago and he was um he was being a he was being a, he was trying to be a slightly more important version and that's not who he is he was trying to be um you know he was trying to behave like 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 another actor maybe mm -hmm. uh, who's known for being a bit of a snotty kind of guy but that's his personality and people love him for that but people don't love you for this and the comments i read about they, people can see through it i think today right. the, the viewers are so sharp they they yeah. really can tell if you're if you're not being yourself mm. um so i think that being authentic and i think that the actors know that even better than us mm. i think they've realized that you have to be who you are and sometimes that is that is ranveer singh who's bizarre and who walks in with a uh, you know with a boom box and and kind of intimidates almost i mean akshay khanna i think like like a ton of bricks at foreign <laughs> when Ranveer Singh walked in with you know in his funny hair and his costume and his and and the boombox and like an entourage of twenty people it was it was mad but uh, but that's who he is right. and I think that once one sort of and, and Akshay Khanna is is shy and quiet and everyone who's like oh Akshay Khanna look bored. No, he is shy and quiet, and perhaps um, you know, in in a room full of people, uh, he he's he's not as as social uh, as he would be one on one. But but that's who he is, right? Uh, you know, unless you're like very spiritually advanced, I believe that every career has its uh, pros yeah. and its negatives. Yeah. So uh, I want to ask you about you specifically as a guy. What do you not like about what you do? Uh, you know, I think that um, I think if you've been watching films. Uh, as long as as long as i have as a career and sometimes sometimes it can get tiring the, the it it takes the it takes sometimes it sucks the the joy out of it i mean films are meant for entertainment right you go to watch a film because you want because you like the trailer and because you want to have a good time for me it's a job and sometimes um that could be because you watch a lot of bad films maybe at one go or um or the mind is somewhere else and you've got many other things going on sometimes the the joy of watching films it starts to become a job and that's really sad because you shouldn't be you shouldn't be a film critic if you don't love it right. um so so you have to kind of quickly calibrate yourself and you have to kind of maybe take some time off or or just um do something that you enjoy um 
and i think that social media is a i'm going to as much as social media is a positive influence i think it really can be can be very very uh, intense. Uh, intense and and taxing and and judgmental and and sometimes that is what you know um the, gone are those sweet days when you when you wrote a review or you put up a review and an email would come or a letter would come you know now it's like also if people don't agree with you the first comment is you must be paid or you must be a, you're, you're biased there is no room for I thought differently. You thought yeah. differently. These, this is films. These, this is not maths. Mathematics two plus two will always be four. Mm. Uh, uh, a biryani, you might really love it. I might not, and yeah. it doesn't mean it's awful. It just means we have different tastes. Right. Uh, but, but people don't get that. I think as a society, we, we, we just feel that if, if we, if ever, if someone doesn't agree with us, then they're wrong. Yeah. There is no right and wrong with films. Right. So I find that that quick judgmental nature. Um, you know, I'm almost after putting out a review. I'm almost like very. I'm like, oh God! Now it's gonna start. <laughs> and I'm like, I, on Fridays, Friday evenings, I don't check my, I don't right. check my mentions because I don't want to. I mean, I, I like, I, at least I need a day. <laughs> to, like, it's been a long day. Watched a movie, came back, wrote it, recorded it. Now I need a day. I can't also take the the brick bats the same day. Right. So sometimes it gets very intense and and and. And if it, when you start to not love it, you really should kind of take some time off. Or, or if you, if you, if you don't love it for a long period, maybe it's not. Maybe it's time to take a break. Right. And what's the biggest blessing of your life? Ah, uh, you know the really the opportunity to um to meet so many interesting people, the opportunity to travel so much. I mean, I've covered the Oscars, I've covered the Golden Globes, I've, uh, you know, I've I've met. Uh, I mean, I met I've met my heroes. I've met Spielberg. I've met uh, James Cameron. I've met Tom Cruise. I've met Clooney. I've met some of the most incredible actors. I mean, just that opportunity to have a job which allows you to travel, watch movies for a living. I mean, you know, most people wait for the weekend to go watch their movies. I mean, I watch on a Monday morning. The job that I have to do is watch a movie. I mean, <laughs> it really is the best job in the world. Till it starts to not be, if right. you uh, if you allow all of those things to get to you, and I think that that's the other truth. The truth is that there will always be cons. It's about allowing them to get to you. Mm. Um, and 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 on some days you wake up and you're really strong and you're able to uh, disregard what people are saying. And on some days you're feeling vulnerable and 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 even the slightest uh, thing will go block. And you know mm. I, I, the number of people I've blocked in the last uh, a couple of months, it's. It's insane because I just I just feel like you know as you get older I mean I just want pleasantness mm. um, but you also have to accept that that's not the world the world is not pleasant right. um, people are and 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 you have to realize that you you know it in you know you know it in principle you know that all these people who are uh, um, who are abusing you it's just their opinion they're probably sitting they, you know they probably don't have great lives you know all those things and it still affects you. Yeah. Can I just like tell you something? Please, I, I I want your advice here because you do it on a much larger scale. Uh, I would imagine that you're getting feedback by the nanosecond. How does I mean? Please, how do you deal with it? I genuinely believe that it's easy in life to get the numbers and right. even possibly to become famous and right. to become successful. It's difficult for humans in life to earn respect. Yeah, and I feel for the work you do because you're so genuine with your reviews because you're so out there, like you're Thank authentic. You. You've gained a lot of respect over the years right. from a whole section of this country. Right. Uh, so Thank even you. if there are haters out there, right. I, I can tell you 90% of the people who listen to you respect you. That's, that's and, very kind. And possibly even the haters... They hating you out of the fact that they hate you know, the I fact actually, that they respect you. Thank you. I actually try to engage with the haters. At least my first, you know, if you abuse, like if you if if you abuse, then I tend to block. But if you if you're even mean, but you have you're making a point, I'll engage. Yeah. Uh, and and most people tell me like you never respond to the people who are praising you. You only respond to the guys who are attacking you. I'd like to give you my opinion of where I came from and you're entirely, you're entirely within your right to disregard it. Right. But I try. I mean, the abuse, I, uh, the abuse, I'm, if you're if you're just like, you know, if you're going to wake up and, and go like every morning, like, Chal Bhosari ke, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I don't have the energy to engage with that anymore. Right, that right. I can't deal with. And that comes a lot. Right, right. I mean, uh, I think it was difficult for me also in the first uh, initial phase of this yeah, YouTube journey yeah. to deal with it. Um, but I just figured over time that there is a concept called the concept of negative biases, which is that your human mind, the way it's built, there are nine positive things happening in your life. Yeah. You'll go on the one That's so negative true. thing. That's so true. Which is true of the comment section as That's well. That's absolutely true. There's actually many good things happening, yeah, yeah. but you tend to focus on the, on yeah, the stuff. Right, that, yeah, right, yeah. right. Which is all the respect that comes your way. Right. Uh, right. And like, I just want to ask you one question to end this conversation. Which is that a lot of YouTubers, and I'm talking from this side of the sure. wall, uh, definitely look at Bollywood and they definitely want to become what a Siddhan Chaturvedi is becoming, right. what a Varun Dhawan has become. Right. They eventually want to become Shah Rukh. Uh, do you see Bollywood casting the current 
top YouTubers you know, I'm as gonna, mainstream I'm, people. I'm going to actually quote what Shahrukh Khan told me um, because no one no one knows better than him. You know, I asked him, I said that, I said, Shahrukh, it feels like this generation of superstars, your generation of superstars, the Amir, Shahrukh, uh, Salman, Akshay Kumar is the last generation of superstars. I mean, it doesn't even, as big as Ranveer Singh and Varun Dhawan and Ranveer Kapoor and Tiger Shroff are, it doesn't feel like they've, they, 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 they have that level of superstardom. Mm. And maybe they won't. Maybe because times have changed. Um, it's just that, that that level of, that craze, that level of madness. Uh, also, you know, they, they were superstars at a time when you didn't have access to right. superstars in the way that you do today. Uh, they weren't on um, social media at that time because social media didn't exist. Mm. So you bought magazines and you put up posters. And I don't know if any people do that anymore. And he said, he said, it's probably true. Um, but he said that the next the next generation of superstars will not be from films. Mm. He actually said, he used the word, and it's, in, it's in the interview, he said there'll be YouTube superstars and there'll be social media superstars and there'll be so, superstars from areas that may not even have, may not even have been developed fully yet. Um, but he said it's, it's possible and, and don't look only at films for the next generation of superstars. Um, also, the lines are blurring. So um, those those superstars from non-film areas might be co-opted because Bollywood is quite shameless. They will co they will take you from wherever. As long, if you can sell <laughs> tickets, we'll have you. You could have you could be wow. a you could be a, a race car driver with yeah. uh, with a huge following, and we'll incorporate you. So I mm. I do think I, I actually and you're seeing it right. I mean a lot of these um, I mean you know they they they're now popping up in in smaller smaller roles, but a lot of the stand-ups and a lot of the YouTubers are now um, you know getting uh, small roles, but but most of them. Are playing themselves I think that what, what Bollywood needs to become smart on is are you going to use them as they are because they're so popular or are you going to convert them into characters and you know you see with someone like Bhuvan you see with someone like uh, Prajakta um, I mean they're creating characters you know Bhuvan has eight nine characters so these guys are good actors mm. it's just you just requires someone smart to know how to utilize uh, these massive influencers and and I don't see why because Already we're talking about how the only people buying tickets and going to the cinemas are young people. Mm. Those are also the only guys who are on YouTube and, right. and um, you know, and, and consuming all of this content and making superstars out of all of you. So I actually do think that, that that's probably what's going to happen. Yeah. Why hasn't it happened till now? Why hasn't like a YouTuber got a main... New. I think it's very new still. You know, okay. I think that I think our superstars are still around. I mean, listen, yeah, Shah Rukh, Amir and Salman are in their 50s and they're still there. Mm. I mean, their films, some do well, some don't, but they're still very much there. Listen, Ranveer and Ranbir and Varun and all are still trying to get into into that slot. So the YouTubers will, you know, it's a it's it's cyclical. It will come. Um, it's already starting to happen. I mean, you know, you see Tanmay in a film and you see Rohan in a film and you see Sumukhi in a film and and they, they, and it's happening. Uh, um, and and Bhuvan, I believe, is you know is is meeting people and has has CAA handling him and I mean not CAA sorry Kwan <laughs> handling him. What did you say? What is okay? Kwan handling him. They used to be CAA Kwan, so I made that mistake. But um. It's it's just a matter of time. It's really just a matter of time. It's all very new, uh, and and Bollywood, the you know the the creators need to start sort of thinking differently. Right. Okay, Mr. Raji Masal. Thank you. I really enjoyed Thank this. You. Thank you. I'm glad. Thank you. Pleasure having so you. I'm Thank gonna you. be linking all of Sir's handles down below. Make sure you check it out. Make sure you subscribe, Thank follow, you. and show some respect. Be the nine out of ten. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much. See you guys. Thank you.